We're backstage in front of House's Crow and the Pheasants put on a show. Are you prepared for the worst case scenario? Roy talks medikits for hunters. If you have a hole in the heart, if you put pressure with this product, you can stop the bleeding. And in the doghouse, Shoot Curious offers some advice to avoid a doggy do storm. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. There's a reason why game shooting is expensive. It's labour intensive. There might only be eight guns here today, but there are three times as many people ensuring the day goes according to plan. Andy is often part of the beating line, but today he's out front and so is his cousin Gary. Gary. They've drawn pegs next to each other, which could be entertaining. Crow is here as a thank you for planting the cover crops. Nice day, nice bit of weather. So a bit bright, really no wind, but uh, hopefully they fly well. They usually do up here. Good thing is I've uh, drawn a peg next to plus one, so it could be quite fun anyway. Watching him shoot, taking the mickey out of him, him taking the mickey out of me. It's all about having fun, really. It's not all about the shooting. No, I just love being out. On the ground above the guns, Lexi is working uh, her dog. The two pips that I give her mean for her to change direction in whatever she's doing. Um, so if I were, if she was going too far out that way, I'm calling her back around to move around this way. If I want her, if I if I see that there's something over there, I can get her to move and go into the direction I want. The multiple pips I use, good girl, is the recall. Um, so she knows to automatically come back. And the single pip I use is the stop whistle. So if, for example, more on a rough day or a walked up day, um, a bird were to flush quickly or we had a walking gun and they were to fire or shoot, um, I could stop her. And maybe either send her in direction of hunting somewhere else or send her for the retrieve, basically. That's what it does. <laughs> in theory, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There's that inevitable anticipation amongst the guns waiting for the first birds of the day. Either that or they want to know what Andy is wearing and shooting as it's a bit exclusive. GM Car has sent me up a brand new 687 double double L. Straight out of the box this morning, I haven't shot it yet so if I have a few misses I can use that as an excuse. Using black gold, dark storm, uh, these are some quite nice birds here so I pack a good punch, so I'm using them. Got the brown gilet, uh, that's from Jack Pike. By the time this film goes out next week, they will have these in stock. I've got some new socks that they just started, uh, the mauve ones. They've got quite a range of new colours and that, so... You look gorgeous. I look the part, yeah.
Considering Andy has never shot the Beretta, he's doing okay. It looks the part on a shoot like this, with the engraved side plates. Another of the guns has a Beretta S06, very tasty. The next drive coincides with the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. As we're just a few miles from Biggin Hill, it doesn't take much to imagine the sound of a Spitfire flying overhead. Stand there and just think how many planes and what planes come through here. And back in the war, and it's just unbelievable. They do usually fly the Spitfire out of here. They do flights out of Biggin Hill, and it's quite nice when that comes through. You can just imagine one coming out, but you can just imagine like 10, 8 and 10 coming in or going out. The noise must have been just phenomenal. Because it does, it just makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up when you're crackling when it goes out. The whole shoot stops for a two minute silence. It ends with a single shot and the drive begins. From the beater's perspective, there are plenty of shots being fired. So what's the trickiest part of this job? Keeping a straight line. <laughs> um, yeah, and certain bramble pathways that aren't pathways <laughs> um, that you have to kind of manoeuvre yourself through. It's not that bad. There's nothing really terrible about it. It's not really a hard job, <laughs> one would like to imagine. <laughs> Time for a snack. The guns enjoy a few nibbles and a drop of something while the beaters move to the next drive. Andy is at the end of the lineup for this one, tucked up in a wood. It's black gold like on parakeets. If they come back over, I'll let you know. Um, there is quite a lot of parakeets up here, they've moved out. There's... I can hear him. He's sitting up in one of them beach trees, I think. Um, yeah, they're moving out from. Keston Way, Bromley Keston, there's quite a lot up through there. They're just pushing out and pushing out. There's getting quite a lot of them about now. This is Crow's best drive so far with some lovely shots. Yeah, I had a nice peg there. I had some nice, some nice ones. I had one real cracker. Um, you know, one real cracker. The elusive parakeet never come out. <laughs> Bloody thing. But hey ho. No, I had some real nice ones there. I had 10 on there for 12 shots. I was happy with that. There are some very pretty large birds here again this year. Gary fancies stuffing one for the sitting room. Not sure how well that would go down with the family who are also here picking up, but give it a go. All too soon, it's the last drive. Last drive, been a good day? Yeah, it's been a good day, it's always a good day. Um, yeah, I had some nice birds. Missed a few easy ones I shouldn't have missed, um, but hi ho. But no, I've had a great day. It's good shooting next to plus one as well. Another two misses, no. That's nice shooting next to plus one. What is all a couple of times. <laughs> but hey ho. Very few birds in here, I think. I've already had a game keeper on the phone telling me there's a lot of birds in here, so. Every time you miss he's on the phone telling me you've just missed Crow. <sighs> it's a pretty pretty gun, if even if it's a new gun. Yeah, it's a lovely gun. Yeah, a nice gun. Um the only problem is a little bit tight. When you have a flush, it's getting it open and shutting it again, but there's nothing wrong with a gun. Just want to be a bit looser, really. I don't like things that are tight, like a bit loose. Andy finishes the day with a right and left. 
it's a great start to the game season for Crow, who's got a few more invites left to look forward to. Beautiful weather for guns and some beautifully presented birds for Crow there. Now someone else who likes to shake his tail feather, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Members of the UK Parliament are to tell the RSPCA to drop all cruelty cases. The Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Select Committee members want the animal rights charity to stop prosecuting pet owners following a string of controversial prosecutions including forcibly destroying a much-loved family pet like this cat. The RSPCA can ignore the committee but it faces having its right to prosecute stripped from it by a change in the law. A cyclist has been shot dead in a hunting accident in Poland. A deer stalker shot a deer in a forest in the north of the country. A bullet went through the animal and travelled a further 300 metres where it hit a man cycling through the forest. Ambulance crews were unable to save him and he died on the way to hospital. Police expect to charge a 21-year-old deer stalker with manslaughter. A rarely sighted dwarf sperm whale has been sighted in the waters of Cape Town. Wildlife photographer Sean Stanton took the shots as it swam in the V&A waterfront harbour. The whales are not often sighted at sea as they prefer the deeper mid-levels of the ocean. They mainly feed on squid and crab. A YouTube vlogger who went missing on a hunting trip is now claiming the police didn't look for him because it was too expensive. Ilke Zaman's family alerted California police after he and three friends didn't return after a trip. Zaman said the police refused to search for him until they detected pings from the group's mobile phones. They were eventually found and airlifted out by a police helicopter. If you speak Turkish, you can hear more of his side of the story in this video. More American states have passed laws to make hunting a constitutional right. Indiana and Kansas have both enshrined hunting in their state charters, which makes it harder for antis to ban hunting. And finally, a Donald Trump win in the US presidential elections is bad news for the gun industry. The surprise victory led to a major fall in gun company share prices. Smith & Wesson stock was down more than 20% and Sturm Ruger down 40% in the two days after the election. They've been expecting a boom in gun sales following a Clinton win. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David, and I've got more from him later. Now, you'd think that since we like to carry guns and knives and disappear off into the countryside, often in the dark, we'd carry a medical kit. Well, we don't. But in Sweden, they're trying to change our minds. Something that we've seen whilst we've been hunting with um, everybody from Main Point, this pack that uh, that they're carrying around is something to do with you. You've developed a, a pack not just for the military, or it's got a, a military history, but you're now trying to bring it into the civilian market with hunters. Yeah, Main Point will uh, have been working with uh, their safety during shootings, hunting, and so on for the last uh, almost ten years. Right. Uh, and uh, all the Main Point personnel going hunt hunting with you yeah, and yeah, so yeah. on uh, always bring their pack when it's prepared for penetrating injuries and right. to, to do life saving uh, uh, interventions. Okay. But, and it's o not only the humans, it's actually how to treat the dog and how to treat your colleague. Now in Sweden, uh, Svenska Jägarförbundet, the Swedish Hunting Association, has now started uh, a, a train the trainer course. Right. Uh, I'm the medical director uh, where we have a train the trainer course that actually looks to train uh, thousands of Swedish hunters for the next three year period. Right. Uh, you can uh, make more of a difference at the point of injury than uh, I as a doctor actually can do in the hospital right. because I have no use of a dead patient. No, no, that's no. it. Uh, so uh, and the most common uh, injuries between Swedish hunters anyway is falling, tripping, cuts, yeah. dog bites etc and sometimes we have shooting accidents right. not as common but when they appear they're yep. more serious yep. and that means we want people to take part and 
do what they can at sight. The, the most important thing, and I would say the game changer, is the different hemostatic agents. Right. Uh, a hemostatic agent is something that actually help the body to form clots. Right. If you have a hole in the heart, if you put pressure with this product, you can stop the bleeding. Right. So uh, what you do when you have the bleeding is put pressure on it. The right. first thing you actually do, if I can borrow her, is put pressure directly on the bleeding. Right. You can elevate it to yep. decrease uh, the, the blood pressure if you mm -hmm. just get above the heart. Right. And what we want you to do after that is to use the hemostatic agent. Right. So it's military product. It's come more and more common in different civilian settings. Yeah, yeah. It's not for the hospital settings because when you arrive at the hospital, this should have been taken care of. So yeah. what we talk about is the pre-hospital environment and hunters, uh, people that uh, train their dogs. We are often far away in austere exactly. environment. But, I mean, uh, all the for, yeah, forestry workers. That, you know, it's, I mean, yeah. massive, wide-ranging conversations for it, isn't there? So, yeah. yeah. Again, anybody, anybody that's working out in, in, in forestry, anybody that's yeah, working far off, and um, yeah. yeah, and and a lot of uh, and, and a lot of the forest works today, they have the tourniquet and the hemostatic agent okay. as a kit in their, uh, in their vest right. as it is and it is, some right. of them already uh, take part in this, in this training. Obviously we've got lots of people you know, watching from all over the world. If people wanted to attend training or, or receive training or receive the book or, you know, and or the, um, the pack, I mean, how do we go about that? Aimpoint give the training before you take part in their education. Mm -hmm. There are other providers so this is, isn't any and a secret, right. but if, if they have que questions, they're yeah. glad to contact me, of course. Okay, superb. Interesting stuff. We'd like a show of hands to see what you think about that. Please comment in the usual places. Now, perhaps more controversial, do those black plastic doggy do bags have a place in the countryside? Let's find out with Shoot Curious. Shoot Curious, a very British game shoot explained how to dress, what is a beater, what is a sporting bird. If you have been invited and have no clue, then this is for you. No. If you have a dog, remember to take your dog with you. The dog must be fed, take some water with you, and of course a lead. Because when you arrive, you don't want the dog to run into the first drive and send all the birds in a totally different direction, especially if you are a guest. You will soon be an ex-guest uh, with a rather bad-tempered shoot host. About 10 minutes before you arrive, you need to find a decent uh, gateway in a field and take your dog out and let it run around and do its business. Uh, believe me, it happens to many of us that you arrive at your host's house with a beautiful, immaculately manicured lawn and the first thing your dog does is to drop a steaming five coiler right in front of your host and in full view of the rest of the guns. Not the best way to make yourself popular. It's not your fault, uh, but there are steps you can take to avoid it. First thing I always do is make sure that my dog is in place with a lead around its neck and securely attached to the ground. Um, this isn't necessary in all cases. Some of us, some of you, have very well-trained peg dogs that'll sit down and um, sit calmly through uh, an earthquake or an attack uh, by enemy fighters. But err on the cautious side, the dog can run in and pick up pheasants. It is what it's trained to do. No. Thank you, Edward. Sage words from him. Now, last week you may have noticed sabotage or maybe just some rubbish editing because we ran the same hunting YouTube twice in two weeks. Well, this is a completely fresh one. It is hunting YouTube. <laughs> Thank you.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Tweeds and Pheasant sends in this film, his first day on his pheasant and duck syndicate this season. The last drive shows her being a back gun isn't great when the two guns in front are shooting well, but it is still a great day. For duck, like you may never have seen them, have a look at Mojo TV's new short film about waterfowl in Argentina, American shooting writer Skip Knowles, duck outfitter Ramsey Russell and Diego Mignotha, decoying David Daydream Duck the Rosy Bill. In North America, freelance duck hunting is characteristically duck hunting. In Kansas, with an open pool and video fumbles, is, as he says in the title, just a good time. Declan and Loz take a nice pair of rodos on the second day of the season in Sussex, UK, in this film by Point of Impact TV. Thanks to Johnny Ellsmore for sending it in. This is the world's first 360 degree deer hunting video using the latest YouTube tech. It comes from Wax Star Hunters in Ohio a couple of America's good guys when that country needs good guys to New Zealand where Full Bore Outdoors NZ brings out his new 15 minute plus film about hunting pigs, deer and possums not much chat just pigs, deer and possums want to know how popular different shooting sports are across the web Browning put out a series about Alberto Rizzini hunting moose, wild boar, red stag, mouflon and roe deer and the winner is this one moose hunting in Sweden with 20,000 views in a month and finally we get a lot of David right sightings across the internet you know the news bloke they're a bit like sasquatch and wookies well this i can reveal is really him not the girl the guy in the previous frame yep him peering in a german tv ad for crisps you be the judge that's it for this week if you have a youtube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight send it in via youtube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv apparently he was young and he needed the money and these are the crisps in question Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Mm. For the pigeons. Still, you can see where he gets his flashy little twirling news from. Bill Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now, if you haven't done so already, please, excuse me, go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or pop your email address into our register page, and we will contact you about our show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. From here in Germany, with real German crisps, good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>